Okay, so let's go ahead and test this XOR gate. Um, I did just run it in the last video. Um, all I've done since then is added this bpn.save and I saved it to my temp folder with the name xorgate.xml. Um, so if we run this, okay, so we completed somewhere before 1500 um, and our outputs are 0 0.002, basically one, basically one, basically zero, okay? respectively. So that has already saved, so let's pull up our XML. Voila! Oops, so this is it. Um, here's our XOR gate. Uh, layer, right, sigmoid linear. These are the connection weights. Uh, 2.9 is the bias here for the top node. 0.32 is the bias for the lower node. Nothing particularly interesting about those. Something that is interesting, this weight here, for this connection on the top node connected to both the one input or sorry to both inputs um, on the input layer are very very similar negative 1.977 and negative 1.997 similarly the connective weights between the output layer or I'm sorry between the second node on the hidden layer and the input layer are also very similar so negative 2.735 negative 2.778 okay now that isn't an accident if you look at the actual solution. So what I've done is taken these weights and this bias and started building up these functions in Mathematica. Now don't worry about the syntax here, but all I did was define the sigmoid transfer function that we're using. This is N1, this is the output from the first node, right? This right here is exactly our values of the XML. So let's go through node one, for example. I don't know if that'll stay highlighted. Okay, so node one is the sigmoid, right? That's our transfer function of this expression on the inside. The expression on the inside is 2.913, okay? So I rounded the bias, plus negative 1.977 times the first input, minus negative, or sorry, minus 1.997 times the second input, okay? So all I did is I took this XML, these values, which are the network, and I translated them into some functions here. Um, so that's the output from node one, uh, that's the output from node two right here, and then this is all of them being put together for the one noding output layer, okay? So let's look at a plot, plot 3D of f of x, y. Um, and what, what ranges do I need? Well. My only inputs were between zero and one. In fact, they were identically zero and one for each of the inputs to the network. So let's plot this between zero and one for both of the inputs. And let's say y goes from zero to one. And let's do some filling just to make it look good. All right, let's plot that. Ta-da, there it is. Okay, let me make this big. All right. Okay, so what is this? Well, right, this is our domain down here between zero and one and between zero and one. The output vertically that you're seeing here is um, the output of the network, right? Now, keep in mind, I only trained these four corners. I trained, well, let's see, oops. So this one here, this is zero to one. This is zero to one. So this corner right here is zero, zero. This is off, off and you'll notice the output is zero, it's off. This over here is one zero, so it's on off, and the output is, well, close to one, right? So that is on. Similarly, over here is on on, so that's off, and back there is, uh, what is that, off on, I guess? Um, and that is also on, okay? So that is the output surface. So you'll notice these four points that I trained are actually pretty darn close to what they ought to be, which is good. Um, but all of the other points in the middle, I had nothing to do with. I didn't, I didn't tell it to do anything with those. Um, so what, what are they? Well, that's sort of arbitrary. If you are looking for data out here, perhaps you should pick some points in here to train, right? This is kind of arbitrary. And in fact, if you look at the curve of this surface, it's not even symmetrical. I mean, along this axis right here, I've got my 
positive solutions and on these corners I got my well sorry my on solutions and my off solutions um, but everywhere else is just what the network assumes the output should be and you'll notice that all of the trained points which have minimal error are blended together right that's um, that's sort of the point so the, the idea would be pick points in the domain this only has a two-dimensional domain which is great and a single output so I can plot it like this but this idea extends to arbitrary dimensions okay I'm picking whatever points are good to train with for the input I am training them with a desired output I was able to train the network successfully so there I've achieved my error and the points that I didn't specifically train the network is clearly blending somehow together um, and how it does that is sort of the magic of the the black box that is the neural network so anyway this is the output surface from the XOR gate with the sigmoid transfer function on the hidden layer and a linear output we could do the same thing um, with the Gaussian or the rational sigmoid um, and I would have to switch my transfer function here and I'm sure I would have a different bias and weights uh, but we would plot them and we'd get something perhaps similar um, so that's that um, maybe we'll do another example here soon if I can think of one that's good and um, I hope that's helpful alright later guys